Hey everyone, Ralph here. Today I got a super simple and fun tutorial lined up for you. So what we will be building today is an open AI powered live commentary of anything that you're seeing in your browser. I have the Shopify BFCM live dashboard up and let's hear what it sounds like when the script is running. Wow, the Shopify platform is buzzing with activity. Sales have soared to over $2.6 million, while the unique shopper count has reached an impressive 15.6 million. Plus, an exceptional volume of orders is rolling in at a rate of 22,701 per minute. Talk about a shopping spree. So pretty nifty, impressive numbers from Shopify on BFCM as always, but let me show you how it is that we can build something that does this. Before I get started, I just want to mention that all of the code and the resources that I use is available in a link in the video description. So make sure to go check that out. And also just briefly want to run this script and explain what's going on. It will be a good reference to have once we dive into the code. Um, so let's go ahead and run this. Uh, I'm using node and the file is called tutorial.mjs. So let's kick that off. It opens up a browser using Puppeteer, as you'll see in a minute. And in my example, I'm using the Shopify BFCM live visualization, which is a gorgeous piece of data vis. Uh, if it's still BFCM, make sure to go check it out, bfcm.shopify.com. It's full of Easter eggs and nice, um, it's generally nice. Go check it out. Um, but so what we're being asked in the terminal here is to show choose a mode, either manual mode or continuous mode. I'll use manual and I'll explain how continuous works and also shows it uh, sh sh show it towards the end. So I'm going to hit uh, one here and then it says press return to trigger. So I'll do that. But first I'll explain when I press return, it's going to take a screenshot of what we're seeing in the um in the browser here and you could use any website we don't have to use uh, shopify.com here i'll take a screenshot it sends that off to the open ai vision api that will look at the screenshot it gets a prompt saying what we wanted to do with it and that's going to provide back an explanation or a commentary of what was in that screenshot we take that and send it off to open AI's TTS API or text to speech. And that sends us back an audio file, which is what we're going to play in the terminal. So if I uh, hit enter here or return, you can see how it flashed, um, resized and flashed. So that was the screenshot. And now the API orchestration is happening behind the scenes. So let's see uh, what it sounds like. Incredible figures are unfolding as we see the Shopify BFCM 23 tracker update. Unique shoppers have soared to over 14 million, all while... So I'm not going to play all of that. I think you understand how it works. And if I'd selected option two here, continuous mode, it would just have read that out loud. And rather than me pressing return to trigger the next one, it would queue up the next one and continuously speak. You can browse around, it'll take screenshots as you go essentially. Um, but let's dive into the code and use this as an example and explain how it's happening. And again, all of the code and resources that I use in this tutorial is available in a link in the video description. So make sure to go and look at that. I want to start off by saying that I'm using OS X and Apple Silicon and I'm running my terminal with Rosetta enabled. Uh, if you're using something else, you might have some challenges with dependencies. Uh, so you have to figure that out. Uh, and I'm using these packages here. I'm using child processes because I'm playing audio with something that is built into um, the OS X uh, or into OS X. Uh, I'm using Puppeteer for the browser and the browser automation, Axios for API calls, FS for file creation and um, file creation and reading. So we're storing screenshots and audio files as uh, files on our local computer. Readline is allowing us to provide information, press enter uh, selections here into our terminal. 
The cubing mechanism allows us in the continuous mode to uh, go ahead and take a screenshot, process it, and have an audio file ready. Uh, so it's ready to play once the, uh, the previous audio file has stopped playing. So we get a little bit more of a continuous mode. And then .env just to read our .env file that has our API key for OpenAI. Now, high up in this uh, file here, we're just defining which website we want to use. I'm using the Shopify.com BFCM one. You can change this to anything else. And then we just set the system uh, message that we're passing on to the Vision API that says or tells it what it is that we want to do. In my case, I'm just saying you're an enthusiastic uh, news presenter uh, providing live commentary of stats and insights from the Shopify 2023 BFCM Globe page, etc., etc. So you can change this to any website and any prompt that you like. And then we're just going ahead and defining our open AI API keys using the um, uh, the API key that we have in our environment variable here. And again, the link in the video description shows how I've set that up. And because we're storing some files locally, both screenshots and the audio, uh, I'm just setting up the directories for that. You can change this. And then I'm just prefixing the files with something that you can change if you want as well. What we're doing next is just checking if these directories already exist. If they don't, we go ahead and create them. So you can see I have them here. If you don't have them the first time you run the script, they will be created. So you don't have to do that. Then we're using the, we're setting up a read line interface. So we can go ahead and communicate with our script through the terminal, providing, um, uh, providing input here. And we're also using this uh, function right here to uh, be prompted for key presses and providing or getting responses back into our script. And then this function here plays audio. Uh, and again, I'm using something called AF play. This is an OS X internal um, playback functionality. If you're using Windows, you would need to change this code. I don't have a Windows machine, so I've had no way of actually figuring out what that would look like. So do a little bit of research, ask ChatGPT, just change this to use a different player and make sure that you import whatever you use as a dependency up higher up in the script. And for the continuous mode, uh, we have an audio playback queue, again, to make sure that you don't have to sit and wait in between every audio file. We try to make sure that we have the next uh, the next uh, audio playback available as soon as possible. And then the rest of the file contains three functions that does a lot of the orchestration for us. This is the main one. It's called start taking screenshots. It's being called at the very end here and it kicks everything off. So what that does is that it takes the URL that we have defined earlier and it kicks off the browser using Puppeteer, the browser that you saw open. I'm using headless false here. So the headless just allows you to run Puppeteer either um, if it's set to false, it will open up a Puppeteer or browser window. If you run it as true, it will run it in the background. You won't see the browser. Um, I'm using false here because I couldn't get the headless true to work and show the uh, actual data visualizations uh, on, on the Shopify BFCM page. Um, so play around with that. You can look at the screenshots and see what it is that uh, the browser actually shows to your script. So we're opening that up. We're setting the viewport. You can change this if your page needs different dimensions, setting JavaScript enable to true, and then we're just going to the URL. Um, and then we're uh, prompting the user this here, choose your mode, manual or continuous mode, and just waiting for whatever we select. In my case, I selected one here. And then this, depending on if you select one or two, we're going to do different things. Now, this is not set up to work well if you give it three or give it X or whatever. So it might want to add some error handling here. I haven't, so I just expect you to give it a one or a two. So in mode one that I showed you, uh, we're just going to prompt this uh, little press return to trigger and then um, 
will go ahead and run this uh, process screenshot. And if it's mode two, uh, we're just prompting something else and then we will be running it in continuous mode. And I can show you that towards the end of the script. But let's go ahead and look at this process screenshot um, function. So um, it will uh, just go ahead and grab the current timestamp, uh, set a file name, uh, set a path of where we want to save this file. It will take a screenshot uh, and then we will store that as a um, uh, we will store that as a base 64 image, which is what the open AI vision API takes as input. And then we'll define our user message. So we want to send this image to the open AI vision API. So uh, it uses the chat completions API that we'll see in a little bit. So we got to define our role as a user here and say we're passing in content. And this could be, you could add some text here. I don't, we pass in an image and then I provide a resize parameter here. Now the open AI vision API will cost different amounts of money depending on the size of your image in terms of dimensions. So if you grab a screenshot of something of your entire screen, that's high resolution, you will pay more than if you downsize that a little bit. So I put the resize default here to 512, which is fairly cheap. I got a couple of other options that you can try, but do a little bit of research and try to figure out what works best for you. If you have a lot of very detailed text, small text um, in your, um, on whatever you're taking screenshots of, the Vision API may not be able to read that well if you're resizing it too hard. So play around and figure out what works for you, but be conscious that cost increases if you don't resize or if you have a higher uh, or a bigger value here. Then in order for us to have a continuous conversation where OpenAI has some context of what we've sent and what we have received back previously, I'm just creating this conversation history and push it, that this into it. And then we're defining the rest of the params that we send to the Vision API. I've set max tokens to 250. If you find that what you get back and what is being read out loud just gets cut off in the uh, like mid sentence, it could be that the max tokens aren't sufficient for the amount of response that you get back. So increase this or decrease this depending on what makes sense for you. The model only one currently available is the vision preview one. And then we're just passing in this conversation history. And then we're calling the chat completions endpoint with that. And we get the response contents based on the uh, message, the last message that we get back from the chat completions endpoint. And then we're just pushing that as well to the conversation history. So next time we loop around, we have the previous user and assistant message in our conversation history, and we're going to send past history into the next call to the completions API. And that just means that future messages will be a little bit more coherent because it knows what it said previously. And the conversation becomes a little bit more uh, continuous. Um, so what we're doing next is calling the streamed audio um, function here, which is the next one, and just passing in the uh, response content that we just received from the uh, OpenAI Vision API. So what we do here is just define the URL uh, of the speech API or TTS. Um, we define our headers. We define the data and this is just the model TTS. I think that TTS one HD allows you to get higher quality. Uh, it's more expensive, so you could change this, but I'm just using this. It's good enough for me. Passing the input text that we got from the vision API. And then I've just got the voice echo set here. OpenAI has various types of voices that you can find on their website. So you can change this if you want to have a different voice. And when just defining that we want this back in the format of an MP3. 
Uh, and then we're posting this using access to the API. And then when we get back, we do a little bit processing here, setting up a audio buffer, and then we're creating the uh, file local MP3 that we're storing on our disk uh, and naming that with a unique name. Uh, earlier, I just had one MP3 file and it got overwritten over and over again. And what I found that is sometimes it got, especially when you're using the queuing mechanism in continuous mode, it would overwrite the audio file as it was being played and it just like we never finished the uh, the entire message before it got overwritten. So that's why I'm using uh, unique MP3 files that get stored to the audio folder. So uh, if you've been running this for a while, make sure that you go flush that out um, and delete old files if you don't need them. And then uh, I'm pushing the MP3 file that we just created to an audio playback queue uh, and that allows us to pre-process the API calls and have something ready for when the previous message has been uh, uh, completed. And uh, that's all. That's the entire script. Um, it, it is not more than about 200 lines of code. Uh, and this is everything that you need. Uh, and I'm sure that there are other ways than using Puppeteer, but this is something that I put together in about two, two and a half, three hours, I think, scrappily yesterday. Hopefully it's a good starting point for you. Let's show the continuous mode here just to show you what that looks like. So we'll fire this up again, choose continuous mode, and now it will just run. You saw it took a screenshot um, and uh, it will go ahead and read that. And then you'll see, if you look at here, you'll see that it takes a screenshot as it starts reading the current message. Wow, look at these numbers rolling in. With sales per minute reaching $2,636,721, the shopping activity is buzzing as 4,509,300 ,005 unique shoppers are diving into the deals. Even more thrilling is the count of orders per minute hitting a staggering 22,433, all while contributing to environmental efforts by removing carbon. Truly an electric atmosphere in the global marketplace today. The excitement continues as sales per minute are still soaring, reaching 2,620. So I'm just gonna stop that. As you can see, uh, rather than finishing the playback and then taking a screenshot, starting to process it, uh, I've set up some queuing mechanism where it takes a screenshot so it has audio ready to play once the previous message has stopped playing. Now, if you want to have um, uh, really current audio, like it's gonna be commenting on something it saw on screen 30 seconds ago. Um, so if you wanna have uh, more up-to-date audio, I'm sure there are other ways of like trying to queue it a little bit closer to when the message is completed. Um, but it's something that I think does the job and it was good enough for me. Hopefully it's a good starting point for you. There you have it. Again, this was scrappily put together by me yesterday afternoon, uh, but hopefully it is a useful starting point for you. If you find this useful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for future videos. But I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in a future video. Bye.